Commissioners regular meeting, Tuesday, September 24th at 11 a.m., Golden Court Community Room. We have an amended agenda. It was a, uh, amended on uh, Friday um, morning, I believe 9.25 or something like that in the morning. So it's well within uh, open meeting law. Uh, number one topic is not reasonably anticipated topics 48 hours in advance. We do have an addition, and that is we just received our annual operating budget yesterday, the 23rd. So we'll need to add that to um, the agenda for uh, under executive director report, and it will be item H. Uh, so the next topic is approval of, go ahead. I, I also just noticed too that within that packet with mm -hmm. the budget is the engagement letter or the contract oh, okay. with Gary DePace. So could we please add that as well? Yes, so I will Thank add you. that uh, HI, we'll make that I engagement letter. I wanted to speak as far as the not reasonably anticipated. Uh, there, uh, did you, you didn't? And you went on without seeing if anybody had anything to say. Uh, you, you, usually you'd notify the chair ahead of the meeting, but go ahead. Well, I just was curious because of the fact that we're Hadley Housing is run by Amherst Housing, a management agreement. Mm -hmm. The second in command now is no longer here. And I feel that it's sort of disrespectful that I myself, I don't know if you told the other people that the person who was the director is no longer working. So, it, because if we have a management agreement, that, um, I think that we should be, a, a, you know, apprised that and I just, no, somebody I just has. Went. So first of all, that happened since the last meeting. So this is the first opportunity. And secondly, the your um, characterization of it being the second in command is not accurate. Well, director and your executive director, and we have a management have, agreement have, with you. So you that's have, what I'm saying well, is. I'm going to call a right. stop to this. I, I, I'm going to ask you to. <laughs> Sue, allow Pamela to respond. I am. I'm, I didn't Please, say without interrupting, Pamela. Right. So it's um, it is the day-to-day -day operations. She did. She retired. There's nothing clandestine or um, uh, we're not withholding information. It happened since the last board meeting. She retired. So, but I feel, I feel personally as a board member that it would have been respectful to the board to let us know. Ma'am, the board's the minute the yeah. board started five minutes ago. I, 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 can I say something? Yeah. I, I think Sue, as Pam Pamela stated, we just started. So if you did have that concern, I would have waited for the whole meeting just to see if it would have been announced and see if that information would have been included, it's not a, uh, included, yeah, right. and then you, you can bring it up. But but as far as bringing it up now and not giving Pamela a chance to actually mention it is, is a little um, before the horse in the car. But I feel that I know how that the board operates and if it's not on the agenda, I would have been told right, we can't discuss it because it's not on the agenda Can I ask when you well. found out that she left? Maybe a week or so ago. Then why didn't you add it to the agenda? Why didn't you ask me to add it to the agenda? Because I figured that maybe I gave you the benefit of the doubt that maybe you would let the board know. So, you had so I'm going to put an end to this and explain to you a couple of things. If you come upon some information that you would like to see added to the agenda, you can email or text me. Okay. And secondly, as Pamela has explained, it's day-to-day -day operations. You, as Board of Commissioners, we have no right to any information about anybody on Pamela's staff because Sweet. it's a, a, just Pamela. It's a violation of the privacy of employees of Amherst Housing Authority for you or any of us to have any personal information. If an employee wants you to know something, that employee will tell you. And can I speak? I, the last thing I'm going to say, I disagree because of the fact, I'll reiterate it again, we're being managed by Amherst Housing, and she, Mary's been here for many years. I felt that we should be informed. You don't have to tell us why she left or what the reason was, but just the fact that she's no longer here. I think it was just disrespectful for so I take umbrage with you calling me disrespectful. And I'm, again, I'm just going to tell you, I am contractually obligated to my staff and to you folks 
Uh, I am not contractually obligated to update you with the day-to-day -day operations of the staffing. That is, that's under my preview, so I, I disagree. So we'll disagree to, we'll agree to disagree. But the law's on Pamela's side. You, there's nothing in the law, rules, or regs to support your assertion. Nothing. In fact, it's contraindicated. Okay? I disagree, but I'll let you have your peace and say your word. Right. Uh, topics not reasonably anticipated. Again, to reiterate, we'll discuss the annual operating budget received yesterday from our fee accountant. It will be item H. We'll have the engagement letter uh, from Gary DePace, which is, is, do we need to vote on that as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll sign that engagement letter. It will be a contract, correct? Uh, I'm, I signed You it. sign it. Yeah. Great. You authorize me to sign We it. authorize yeah. you to sign it. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, so the next item will be the approval of the minutes of August 27, 2024. That's a votable item. Can I get a motion? Motion. Crystal motions. Can I get a second? I'll do the second. Rich seconds. Discussion. Sue. No discussion. Crystal. No discussion. Um, I have only a one word, and I'll get with uh, Pamela after. I Rich. No. Call for the vote. I, I have right. to hear something. So Sue. Yes. I vote yes. Yes. And I vote yes. So it's four to zero. The next is the executive director's report. Uh, Pamela, would you like to give that in its all its entirety, or do you want to have various board members? Um, it's really up to you, folks. But I, I mean, you're you're just getting the packet. So it may, you may be behind the eight ball. Well, uh, there's no way we can do annual operating budget. You know, okay. we can't present that. But the okay. warrant report, do you feel comfortable yeah. okay. having Rich do that and sure. the treasurer's report? Sure. You want to go with the warrant now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, transactions between 8824 and 8824 in the amount of $1,015.87. Are you on... This one? And your first one. Okay, so the amount is 25. Where? Second page. See, this is just the first page, and then the second page is the... Uh, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. All right, that's good. Okay, yeah. I don't see that. Uh, second page? Second page. Yeah. 25. Right there. Okay. All right, I got it. Uh, $25,980.63. Can I get a motion? Motion. Crystal motion, second. 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 Rich seconds. Discussion, Sue? Nothing. Crystal? No. I have nothing, Rich? Nothing. nothing. Call for the vote. Okay. Please loudly say yes. 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 Yes and yes. Okay, motion carries four to zero. All right. Next one is between okay. transactions between 822 24 and 822 24 in the amount of that'll be uh Six thousand six hundred and sixty-four dollars and ninety-one cents. Can I get a motion? <coughs> Crystal motion, second. Second. Rich seconds. Call uh, discussion. Sue. No discussion. Crystal. No discussion. I have nothing. nothing. Rich nothing. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Four to zero. And the next item is uh, the treasurer's report. Rich. I usually read that, but everybody looked it over. Yes. They don't. We got that much money left over at the end of August. There's no vote on this, anyways. There's no vote. This is no. just a. That's 33. Yeah. So there's. Um, so everybody's read it, uh, but let's have some discussion if anyone has any questions or comments. Sue? Nothing. No. Crystal? Um, I have only that um, we now have, uh, it'll be on the second page of your treasurer's report. Our fee accountant is including our estimated reserves as of date. This was generated for August 31st. 
And so I just wanted to draw the board's attention to that our reserves, and thank you, Pamela, our reserves are up to 68%, thereabouts. It's not exact because of bill paying, but our reserves are already to 68%, mm -hmm. um, and we're at $149,731 in reserves. And this is a planned thing to make it so we can do our next capital improvement project because they always go over. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, and things that aren't covered under capital improvement. Yeah, uh, well, of course, but this is for any um, overages, et cetera, et cetera. So we are in great shape. Um, and, and I had a question, um, if you'll notice on also on page two, uh, about one, two, three, four, five lines down, interest on investments unrestricted. Um, I had a question, Pamela, the uh, actual year-to-date amount, uh, $2,419.29, that's the interest so far this fiscal year, correct? So it'll be about one year? Yes. So we've made that in interest. Do you have any idea what our interest rate is? Because we've got two investment accounts. Well, it is MMBT. Is mm -hmm. our, um, it, do, I'm not sure if you got to talk to her at conference, too. Yeah. I think she was saying that we're, we've been doing between 4 and 6% mm -hmm. yeah, on it's the market. So a, yeah, like right now down. it's going to go down, by the way. But, and but, that's a municipal yeah. Um, yeah. deposit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a savings account at Greenfield Savings. Mm -hmm. Um, Which is nothing. It's nothing. It's very small. Um, and we made two bucks on it this past month. So. <laughs> but um, the uh, investment account in MMDT is looks like it's doing pretty well. Yeah. So I wanted to draw your attention to that because that's very good news. That's all I had. Rich, do you have anything else? No, I don't. The last page of the treasurer's report is the modernization report, so to speak. Is there anything you want to tell us from that? Um, we do have um, design, um, we do have the designers that have been, I can talk about it more when we get to the vacancy. Yeah, yeah. But no, other than that, they're just moving slow. We're, we're in process, but it's like molasses in January, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the next item, on the agenda, this also does not require a vote. Is the unit vacancy report? Um, do you want to do that, or yeah, uh, Sue? Would you like, to, or you can do it? I'll do okay. it. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Six six seven Golden Court Apartments. Total vacancy is five. Seven o five Berks Way Children's Unit. The occupancy rate. It, I mean, the vacant rate is two. Total of seven apartments that are unoccupied at the moment. Uh, and Pamela, you want to flesh that out a little bit? So we uh, of those. Um, so the Berkway, both of those units are long-term capital projects, so they're really offline, uh, and that's due to the projects through EOHLC. And then of the Golden Court apartments, there are the, there's two brand new ones um, due, unfortunately, to the passing of our residents. So that went up. And then the, there's three of them that are remaining that are offline due to uh, EOHLC capital projects. So And those ones have been assigned, all of them have been assigned designers, mm -hmm. which is a form of an architect <laughs> so yeah, yeah. hopefully they'll be moving quickly we have once again told them that the two units here at Golden Court that are getting ADA improvements are really a priority they are yeah. uh, because they're there we have people for them so yeah really so they have nobody right now nobody can go in them right now they they're can't go now. in them but we have people circling right. waiting okay. So basically that would be just two because the other three are offline, the family is offline, so two are the ones that are going to be re redesigned and we have someone for those? We do have, uh, two of them are going to be re redesigned ADA and then there's a third one and of a 667 that is also Coming up. getting an upgrade too. Okay. Uh, and then the two at Berkeley. So five total, five of the seven are offline, are offline, are offline. because of, and have been because of EOHLC. So the two, excuse me, sorry, no, the two in family, 
Did that number go down or it stayed the same? It's okay. Stayed the same, okay. Yeah. So we've got two at Golden Court that because we lost two residents, right. yeah. they'll just be cleaned up and... Yeah, I don't dare add anything else to the vacancy unit initiative because it's just taking too long. It's mm -hmm. taking too long. So we'll just have to turn those over and then they can be... Using our, our funds. Yeah, we're... using our funds. Yeah. Okay. Um, next would be tenants account receivable. Do you want to do that, Pamela? Or so we are um, making some strides there. That up the the top part is the the tar balances. Um, so we do have a good number of folks in the six six seven that owe money. The seven oh five is uh, two folks. Not sure why there's no late fees there for them, and then the um, repayment agreements. We do. Uh, there's sixty six ninety four forty one in repayments repayment agreements. Wonderful. But it's still it's, it's a lot of money outstanding. It really is. Yeah. It really is. But um, you and your staff do everything you can. I know you do from all the reports we've been getting, mm -hmm. to encourage tenants to, to enter into payment agreements. Right. If they have a rough couple of months, they can enter into payment agreements, keeps them out of housing court. But if you have to, you do take them to housing court right. because sometimes that's the only way to get people to pay what they owe. Right. Could I ask a question, Pamela? So with the option to go into repayment, do they utilize that or do they just let the arrears build up? Um, it, it's some, most of the time, when it, the first tier when you go into housing court, every single time, the, the first time you go into housing court, there is a mediated uh, meeting where you, you try to get into that mm -hmm. repayment agreement. So there is one of the repayment agreements that we actually have that is through a mediated agreement. Okay. Um, but because it, in housing court, but because the the tenant is compromised, mm -hmm. they just don't agree. Mm -hmm. So it's still they it, it it's back and forth now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's that that's our goal is to get them into the repayment agreement. Yeah. And and also when we go to court, we're able to go for a longer period of time. Okay. Good. So um, but. That we would love to not go to court with people. <laughs> and that's that's what I see as Reese say, I, I see you working so hard behind closed doors to not have to go through the process of evicting someone because you do understand, you know, housing is limited and you try to help everyone, but sometimes you do have to go a different right. route and it's a lot of times it's heartbreaking, but it is a job you have to fulfill. However, housing court doesn't necessarily, I mean, they work hard too trying to get people to understand. And then I think there's the rare instance where housing court can't even convince someone to right. pay. Right. And Pamela does her job to yeah. represent yeah. the housing authority in, in a positive way. It's a positive. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now uh, we are down to uh, E capital improvement report. Do we really have one today, or um, so? Do you think we have is so? This is um, a capital um, for admin fees. No, no, we're on e. e capital improvement report. Isn't that part of it? Well, well no, I guess it's underneath it. But. It's underneath it, but it, it, you know. It kind of trips us up every board meeting because um, yeah. we could probably eliminate that and only add it when there's a definite capital right. improvement report. Right. So, uh, do you want to uh, go down to the admin fee project? Yep. So this is for um, this is for admin fees to be paid back to the housing authority to the, to the Amherst Housing Authority. So Hadley would apply for the help, the fees through the project 117097. That was for uh, access ramp. Mm -hmm. And each project, there is a budgeted line item that allows you to have 10%. So it's uh, $547. And then that would be paid back to the Amherst Housing Authority and that helps us to have a director of facilities. Well, mm -hmm. it, what it really does is Amherst Housing Authority is doing all this 
extra work mm -hmm. to administer this contract, mm -hmm. and that has to be paid. Yeah, uh, that's what the state yeah. requires. So, um, so that is a votable item. So mm -hmm. I will ask for a motion. I'll make the motion to accept the admin re uh, report here of five hundred forty-seven dollars. And that's for project number. Project number. One one seven. Could these when these are? Uh, well, hold on, please. Go ahead. It's always. Uh, one one <laughs> okay. seven zero nine seven. That's it on date. Nine on date nine twenty twenty four. Can I get a second? A second. And Crystal seconds. Rich's motion. Now I will open it up for discussion. Sue. Yes, I would like to see when this happens to write the project name. You're saying now is for ramps, handicap mm -hmm. ramps. It doesn't mention that. So when I was reading the packet over mm -hmm. at home, can it at least mention the project sure. and not just the number of the project? Yep. yep. You can and I also wanted to know it, um, also about because of the fact that this 10% to Amherst Housing or any housing authority that's managing a project because there's a PRN on it, what percentage of housing authorities are actually utilizing or taking this money? I have no idea what other housing authorities. I have always because you're, you know you're in communication with a lot of these houses. Yeah. You know, I'm just curious because the fact that you said it existed before, but now you're just recently taking advantage of it no. and taking in, in advantage of it in the sense that you're utilizing it. No. It's no. coming. No. You use so, the last money for, in other words, for a down no. payment on the right. so van. We, we have, um, I have a personal philosophy that I never leave money on the table. So from the time I've been hired by e DHCD or e right. I'm not hired by them, I'm hired by you folks, um, I have always taken the admin money, always. It's money that is in the capital project for the housing authorities. And then in Belchertown, we used it for other projects. Yes, I just but don't Air, remember hearing but, until recently. Right, but I explained the last time that right. it's new that we have to have it go before the board. Amherst has always used their admin money to fund the position of the, either a modernization coordinator, which was Chad Howard years ago, or and now the director of facilities. The, so I think it. what keeps tripping us up here, Sue, is um, this was always a thing for how every housing authority, not just managing agent housing authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, and the administration fee was 10% that, uh, th that had to appear in your budget to, in, in essence, pay you back for administering the contract that DHCD or EOHLC required you to do, various upgrades, ramps, ADAs, all that kind of thing. The only thing different now, and Pamela has explained this for meeting after meeting after Can meeting. I understand it. Hold on. Right. Then the only thing different that's been required is that the board has to <coughs> Uh, you know, vote to allow EOHLC to give us the money that we then give to Amherst Housing Authority. Do I have that essentially accurate? Yes. Okay. So you keep bringing this back. You brought it back for three meetings in a row in the spring, in the spring and into right. the summer. But it's the same answer every time. Right. I understand that. I just would like to maybe call uh, Ben Stone or somebody in uh, EOHLC to s just to have more of a clarification about this. There's the public housing notices. The public right. housing notice came out in. I'm a believer in sharing. In other words, right? But nobody uh, sharing I'm, money. So if the project is here, I, I still don't believe that Amherst, should, because even though you're our managing so, agent, should take the whole amount. But but so that's I'm not always good with analogies, but I think this is similar so that would be omasta is our landscaper mm -hmm. so that would be akin to you having omasta come and do the leaves and then say yeah we're not going to pay you for the extra work right. just do it because we have a contract with you so you're asking us to do extra work but you're not willing to pay us for the extra work so the, that actually hit i'm not always <laughs> our managing agent Very housing good. authority is the one who did the work 
of administering the contract. I understand that. And we right. have to pay them for administering this contract. That's what's required by EOHLC. You think, if I'm to understand correctly, that you think Hadley Housing Authority should get part of that money, yes. but Hadley Housing Authority didn't do any work. Well, that it will, if a project comes in, to, money comes in for Hadley Housing Authority, like the window project, and there's 19,000 some amount of money left over, I feel that a certain amount of it should go into the Hadley Housing Authority, Money, you know, into the bank, and some of it well, should go. Yeah, I think it is a different. But it should be shared equally yeah. because mm -hmm. it was our money coming from our project. What's left left over? I don't think it doesn't sound or feel right, right that it all goes to Amherst because it came to us for our project. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. But all, but back to that window project. Right. If you recall, a good chunk of that management money actually did go right to the residents when we fed you breakfast and lunch and snacks mm. for a full we, month. So that was a, and I had staff here from morning to night. No one's saying you didn't do. No, 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 excuse yeah. me, hold on ma'am. Right. We, we paid the staff, we, we paid, we had to reimburse Amherst right. for the staff to be here and we used that money to buy the food for the residents for that entire month. So that was shared. That absolutely was shared, but that's just not that's not how business. It just works. doesn't feel. So, it never, so no matter on. how many times you explain it, it so doesn't feel on. right to hold me. Hold on, right. I understand that it doesn't feel right. It's been explained over and over again. You seem to think you just said it that there was leftover money. There was no leftover money. That money is a required budget line item on capital improvement projects and smaller projects like the ramp project. It's required. Well, it's, avail it's available. It's, it's on available. the budget. It's and then we, uh, we have to pay back Amherst for what they spent, and it's 10%. It, it still doesn't, and no matter how many times you explain it, it's still, I just, just believe in sharing if there's left, I believe that it's leftover money from a project. That's, That's how it was explained to me, that it was almost $20,000, so and I feel that who, because it was a, who so, explained and, and, to and, you and, that and, it was leftover because, because no we, one here ever was at has. a meeting where they there, talked about the, the there, no. It was unutilized money that was left no, over. No, it's, project. nobody ever no, said that. that was actually a bad rumor that was going around. In fact, I got a phone call from Community Preservation saying there's leftover over mm -hmm. money. No, it's somebody that's not understanding in the public mm -hmm. that was watching that was speaking to you as well that twisted it and said it was mm -hmm. left over. There was no leftover money. It's a budgeted line item. So you're, it's yeah. it is it's I understand what you're saying. I know but ma'am again this but is I just wonder wait, how many so, people are utilizing I mean who managing or how many people why are Why would you leave it on it? the table? Why would you leave why would you leave let EO, EOHLC keep it? I think why would they keep it? Why couldn't it just go into the Hadley Housing Authority? And then what bank? do you want me to do with it? just you want me to just take taxpayers money no, and right. then just kind of put it put it away that we can do because it was our project for it's, our housing but authority, you didn't not do, Amherst Housing Authority. But you didn't, didn't do, the do work. anything for it. We have no Amherst employees. But the things that you did do for it aren't necessarily things that the tenants okay. or people wanted. That was, it was chosen, yeah. in other yeah. words. What was chosen? Yeah. Like providing food. It wasn't well, like I, asked. So, is it, I mean, it, I don't want to swear. Right. We're damned if we do, we're damned if we no, don't. But so we provided services and the residents used it during a window project that is absolutely gorgeous. It is. And now you're telling me you didn't choose that. No, we you're didn't not, choose having our gardens ripped up. Please. Right. Please. Okay. It, it, that's yes. just, that, it's that's just, okay. Yeah. I'm going to stop this discussion. Yes. yes. I will uh, summarize it. After all these explanations over and over again, you still do not understand. You're getting I understand. your. You, I don't agree. Uh, no. I have the floor. You're getting clearly getting your information from someone else who doesn't know the rules, the laws, and the regs. We, uh, Pamela, has explained this to you. I've explained this to you time and time again. And I'm not. Gonna, and we're done. Still don't agree, right? And we are done. So. Uh, Pamela, we are trying to get this admin fee for Project 117097. We got off track in 
the discussion session. I'm going to go to Crystal. Do you have any discussion about the admin fee for Project no. 117? No. I have nothing. I have Rich nothing. has no. nothing. I will call for the vote. Um, Crystal? I vote yes. 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 And Rich, yes. No. Sue? And Sue votes no. It is three to one. Sue Oppenheimer says nay. And then I just added down at the bottom under the comments that we're requesting the fee and that you're authorizing Amherst to have it. Could you sign that? I would be we'll, happy we'll to. Do you have a black pen or something? All I have is a red pen with me today. Thank you. I made it really big so there's no confusion. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now we're down to the end. Um, the uh, is it EF work order. Work, order. G, work order report. Crystal, would you like to do the work order report? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take the works here. I hope I was given the work order. Yeah, it's end. it's toward the very end of you the can use mine of the original. Okay. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't. I can't see. Okay. <laughs> you might go ahead, Pamela. We'll just move this along. Okay. Um, so you, it's the the work orders between August and uh, August first and the thirty first. There's really nothing out of the ordinary. Um, you will be seeing more and more inspection work orders as come up as come up as we um, have McWright and Associates doing uh, more and more of our inspections too. Okay. But nothing out of the ordinary unless anybody has any questions. No. Uh, I do have a just. Are we done with the bug and the mice problem that that was? The, oh yeah having a problem for us mm -hmm. last year because I didn't see any yeah. any pest control so yep. what a relief I gotta tell you okay does anybody have any questions about the work orders Sue no Crystal no, no? I have nothing rich uh, no then let's move please right along to uh, the annual operating budget and this is Pamela for sure. Okay. Should have had Mr. Pace here. <laughs> or we may have him show up next month. Um, so with, we have the one operating uh, the development 400-1, which is a combination of our 667 elderly disabled ha um, housing and our 705 family housing. So you, it's all pretty standard. Um, basically, what we do is we, we get the uh, the approved increase, and we apply it across all of the budgeted line items that we've yeah. used in the past. Um, we, every year, we're trying to build in more and more money into maintenance and labor and contract costs, so that we can do more and more improvements within our own budget as well as that capital plan. Um, it get, you know, there's no employees in Hadley, so there's no employee costs. Um, there's no purchasing of equipment. Uh, right now, we're in the process of purchasing a new F-350 pickup truck for the Amherst Housing Authority. Um, and then our, our thought process is to get the Hadley truck and the Belgertown truck to one of the trade schools. Mm -hmm. to try to see if they can shore up the bodies a little because there's yeah. a lot of rust happening. Mm -hmm. um, but they're low mileage. They're in really good shape. Um, so those will be out of commission for a while. We did just put in, um, what was it, tires? There was a good, There, uh, you'll, you'll see the bill next month for, um, or did it come through this month? We're, bill we're billing back. For, mm -hmm. There was a, a cost onto the truck that when I when I saw it, I said, no, we, Amherst should be paying that because Amherst did use the truck a lot more okay. than Hadley did. So Amherst paid to have that truck improved. Excuse me, Pam. Mm -hmm. this, this vehicle that you're purchasing, didn't you just purchase a new vehicle for Amherst? We did, but all of our vehicles from Amherst to Belchertown to Hadley are all in, they're really rusting out. They're very old. 
Um, the Belchertown truck, I believe, is now 12 years old. It's got really low right. miles. It's got like 35,000 miles on it, but the rust on it. New England weather. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's just, um, so we are, we're trying to replace every year. Yes, but um, I understand it's nice that you're taking the other vehicles to have them upgraded. Mm -hmm. But again, the second vehicle will be, will be under Amherst Housing Authority. Your second new vehicle, not Belchertown and not I have. So when I've talked to our fee accountant, there's no way to really buy a vehicle for Belchertown or Hadley when you have no employees. Right. So the thought process is, is that we'll get them in really good shape um, and then either we'll, we won't need to replace as, as soon as possible or we would turn around and sell the vehicle for you and then that money would most certainly go right into the Hadley bubble. Budget. But if, if, if someday mm -hmm. we split apart from Amherst Housing, mm -hmm. Amherst Housing will have two new vehicles and Hadley Housing and Belchertown will have all the vehicles. Again, mm -hmm. Amherst Housing being the person that benefits the most. Uh, actually, so that to... whole period of time that you just described, that Hadley wouldn't have a vehicle, we could be saving money to buy a brand new vehicle. So And you are. Yeah. And we are. But then so, the, the money that's going to go into a new vehicle for Amherst after they just got a new vehicle could be Amherst. So I, I would like to point out right. it's yeah. Amherst money. Right. It's our budget. It's, I, in, uh, we have a completely different budget, and I budgeted in Amherst for a mm -hmm. new truck. It has nothing to do with Hadley at all. It's it's 100% Amherst money. Yeah. I, I think what Sue, I believe, is trying to say is there any way that we can finally have a, a kitty or a budget for right. Hadley so that we can get our own vehicles? You do have a budget. You, you have your budget reserves. Yeah. So until we put it, a line item in for a truck, which is what we're we doing in Belcher or in Amherst, is we say, okay, we have this much money, and when we're doing the budget, we go, okay, okay I've got $60,000 and then I add a line item for the truck. Yeah. And you're saying the reason why we can't do it is because we do not have employees on the right. Hadley Housing Authority that would need a vehicle. It doesn't really, it doesn't make sense to to take your budget reserves and buy a new vehicle. That no one If can you use. want me to buy a new vehicle, we can go back to the drawing board and move some money from your reserves in some other areas and buy a truck. No. But then your truck is sitting there. Sitting. Well, we're using. We do use the truck. They use it more than me. They use our truck every day. They come and take it. Right, but she's saying right. if we wanted a truck for Hadley, they, she can rearrange the budget. Budget start over, but that would not be applicable because we wouldn't need it. Okay, you yeah, really and we, we. I'm not saying we do need it. All I'm saying is again, I feel the that everything's going to Amherst. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, Amherst is the person that's managing the other housing authority, but we as Hadley and, and Belchtown have to protect ourselves. No one's saying this management agreement is going to go on forever. No, I actually it has I think to we're go. moving towards regionalization. Yeah, but so until that, then is what right, I'm saying. So we vote on this. In other words, three-year management agreement, five-year management. After that, then it's up to us to decide if we're going to, as a board, to continue right. or not. And, and in the, so each time that Amherst gains more things like a like a truck in a new van it's less it's less more things that Hadley if we break apart has to deal with How? no that's why How I no yes we but budget. we have to go to our budget but yeah. I have but that's what Amherst budget. is doing they're using their budget to buy the but vehicle. they just bought a new vehicle but so, so, so are what? some of our it, there's funds too that that sounds yeah, very so it's like a second new vehicle we, but it yeah. doesn't matter that's Amherst they have lots so of I can, so no I, can I just believe in I'm just putting can, this fairness thing I believe in sharing not, and I don't think that, the, that this but is we happening. are sharing where Amherst Housing Authority is sharing and we're taking on a management agreement and we do not make anywhere near enough money to cover what we're actually doing so I'm sharing with you and I've been sharing with you now for five years and it's still not good enough Sue mm -hmm. so on the at the other side your budget reserves are increasing to 68 percent 68%. In my 400 program in Amherst, my budget, I had to take money out of a different program and add it in there so that we would get 40%. Wow. So you, you yeah. have more money than Amherst does in the same programs because we're, we're giving. We're constantly giving and working to do the best that we can. We used Amherst money 100% to fund a new vehicle. 
It's not a slight on Hadley. If you want me to buy a new vehicle, I'll that. be happy to spend money. I love spending money to authorize it, and I'll go buy a new truck. No, I didn't say we need it. I'm just saying I believe no, you're just sharing. feeling. I just believe that if you didn't just buy one and then you hear you're buying another one, it's to me. It's, it's actually I don't mean to be rude, but it's none right. of your business what yeah. equipment what? the Amherst Housing Authority buys. It's really not. It's it not the purview we'll, of this board. Okay. And it's not your business or my business or any board member's business who Amherst Housing Authority hires or who it. resigns or when they're second when they're a director. No, of the housing it's authority. none of your business. We've got five directors. Yeah, but the, we are going. I'm putting I, I, a, I think, yes, Crystal, you go ahead. I think we should move on. Um, yes, we've thank been you. On this topic, well, it's it's been okay. It has been explained. Ad and yeah. we need to move on. Okay, mm -hmm. so thank you. Can uh, Pamela, would you please go ahead with the rest of the annual operating budget? Yep. So the, really, what we did with with the the extra funding that D, DHCD is providing in the budget, um, the budget this year, is we really put it into maintenance costs and con maintenance contract costs, and again, that's going to have a direct effect with the residents in the unit and the facility to keep improving what w each of the units more and more. I think we've seen that. We sure have seen that. Yeah. So we do. We have that. And then um, let's see. Go through the legal services. There's a line item of thirty-five hundred dollars. That's on page mm -hmm. three of eight. And if I can just explain that, we do use the regional, um, the regional attorney, <clears throat> excuse me, the regional attorney program through EOHLC. Based, they allot money based on the number of units that you have. So we're allowed to budget thirty-five hundred dollars. So it comes into our our budget. Um, it's a, it's a line item in our mm -hmm. budget, but then they pay it. They pay us for that as we use it. Yeah. If we don't use the $3,500, which we do, mm -hmm. we always go over, um, then we would get less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they ever give you more because no. you need so much? So there is talk There is talk about budget augmentations mm -hmm. of, of them coming in and providing more money to housing authorities to raise their budget reserve. Yeah. But it, we're, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to hear that within the next couple of months. Oh, good. Yeah, there's something coming up that will allow that. And this will be f accountable for all the, t the housing authorities. That's what they're saying. Each yeah. one. That's good. So yeah. that means Hadley would see it improve as well. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, your line item with the, the schedule of positions and salaries. Um, what is a family? Oh, the family factory. I know that. Um, that's on page four of eight. So again, you don't have any staff, so um, that's not there. But because the management agreement fee is based directly on the salary of what the ED would be if you had an ED. So we do have to go through that. This is part of the budget, um, the budget submission. So this is the executive director salary calculation worksheet. So this is a stock form from EOHLC, and it brings in the number of programs that you have. Um, a family factor is when you have you get a little bit extra money for managing the anything with a with family housing, um, and it will t it and it's prorated in Hadley based uh, because it's not a full time housing authority. So Gary has filled this all out. In this section. Um, I think you all, you all do have this. Mm -hmm. And Risa, you will, the vote board will need to vote this and then sign it as well. So okay. This one. So yeah. at no, right no. now, the um, this one. If you hired a part-time director, it would be for 16 hours. I'm actually not sure you could get the 16 hours, but so the the salary is. Three thousand nine hundred and or no thirty nine thousand. I'm sorry, yeah, three thirty nine thousand three hundred and sixty four dollars. Yeah, and that's a little bit up from what it was two years ago. Oh yes, there's been a, there has there's been, been an, an increase. increase. Yeah. What are the hours for this salary? 
16. 16 per week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pam, I have a question. Yeah. And, are they keeping it at 16 hours and not 20 because of the fact they don't want to give benefits? Because we had 20 all the years. For many years, we had somebody here 20 hours, and then somebody came and it became 16. There was a, a point that it was uh, 20 and went down it, to 16. They, they dropped the four hours. It I, was not because of they didn't want to get benefits. It was because e, uh, D, DHCD recalculated the per unit allotment for hours. Hmm. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, it, it's that's right. And the saying that it's at 16 now, I think it, I think it would even drop more. Oh. Is that accurate? Nowhere near accurate. So they're almost forcing people to join together and almost forcing people to regionalize. That's Nobody right. can run a housing authority on 16 hours in the office, and so we already know that. So in, because they're doing that, the, uh, you know, they're almost forcing people to join together. That's so right. So I'm, I'm going to absolutely agree with you. They're not almost, they, they really are. That's the yeah. intention. Yeah. That's the intention is to make us all join together um, it does benefit us to be together. You can't, no one would be in this office for 16 hours. If you had somebody here on your own, they're probably putting in 20, 25 hours mm, a more, week. Probably. Yeah, I mean, probably it's for full time, they're saying 37 and a half hours. Right. I work nowhere near 37 and a half hours. You I'm putting double. in between 50, 60 mm. hours a week. Yeah. And we would never get capital improvement projects done if we had a 16 hour week person. It looks, it's much just can't happen. But, the, but the, getting back to one more thing I want to say is there's so few housing authorities that have joined together. So there are that's a lot true. of people that's that are working that's not true. It's 16 more hours a minute and unfortunately can't do it in that a lot of time. There's more and more housing yeah, authorities. Yeah, they're doing management agreements, regionalization, and also yeah. contracting mutual aid. Lots of mutual aid, Pamela, is that correct? That's what I heard at the Mutual Conference. aid from who? From what? From various other housing authorities. They're doing mutual aid, share and maintenance, contractually, all that kind of stuff. Okay, Pamela. So then I'm trying to see these. Okay. Because I think we're missing the form about how much the housing, of the, how much the management agreement is in the new budget. I don't know if it's a form now or... Well, the, uh, the last page of this packet mm -hmm. uh, is the board approved salary. Right, that's the board approved salary, but then there's the other, the other one that is, because um, it's 1.5 per, pardon? Would it be a calculation or it's right after the board approved salary page. Oh, I don't have that page. Yeah, I don't have oh, that. Oh, okay. Huh? You no? Okay, yeah, okay. you do. It's on it's at the end of this one. I'll take that one. Okay. Oh, it is on the end of this one. Yeah, yeah it, it's at the end it's of on the end of this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the end of the of the full yeah. packet. Yeah. This one. Right. So then the management calculate which again this is a standard fee or mm -hmm. a standard form mm -hmm. in calculation. So the you get the thirty nine thousand three hundred and sixty four from this form about what you would pay the um, for an ED, and then you multiply it by one point two five percent, which is forty nine thousand two hundred and five dollars, which would be the management fee. Um, so step three is what share I get. Um, which is really based on what Amherst chooses to give me because they pay me. But the most I can get is 20% at this time if it... Um, so your salary increases only by $9,841, <coughs> which I find egregious well there yes there are other people that work too but yes, yeah that's what yeah. I get paid a year by you guys so <laughs> through through uh, with your money so we yeah. would need a, a vote for um, what if we can stay on this apart before we go to the full the full yeah 
But yeah, let's get this signed and get it done. So you would have to authorize the the new ED salary, which is this thirty nine thousand three hundred and sixty four. And where is that again? That's on the separate so form. You go to this one, right? And it's the page before the last. So. so we need a motion, please. I'll move that we uh, authorize the amount of $39,364, mm -hmm. correct? Um, it's not in here. It, yeah, it is, it is, keep going. Keep. Way, 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 way. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let's, we gotta get the page out. Yeah, here we go. There you go. Or oh, wait a minute, that's not even the right one. There you go. Okay. Uh, so I move that we authorize the management fee of $39,364 according to the management fee calculation worksheet. Um, to, what The uh, negotiated management fee, $49,205. Isn't that what we should be moving on? You have to well because you have to sign this form first, saying that you acknowledge that you okay. uh, that you approve it and that you and then we we sign the upgrade. Yes, okay. right. Is so this percentage okay. the same as last year? Is this since we've been managed by Amherst? Is this a continuum? No, it ch it changes. So last year the management. Um, the ED salary, so um, not the amount of salary, but the how the, how percent. they calculate the salary. Is it done the last five years in the same percentage? It's been done like this since I was hired at you know, agency, right. so it's it, the same. But the percentage changes every year with the budget guidelines. So this past year, which my thank you for coming, um, I, uh, this I past year there was a seven percent increase for uh, up to 7% for administrative employees, but for executive directors, it was about 1.75%. So the management fee only increased the 1.75%. Um, and then this year, 1.75% since last year, you're saying, it increased. Well, that's last year it was 1.75. Right, and this I, year. I'm sorry, I'll have to get you a diff, um, what it increased this year, because it's the new budget guidelines. It may have been, it may be like 4%, but I, I'll, I can get you that figure and email it out to the court. And is this what you consider what they call a cost of living raise, or no, nothing to do with cost of living? We, I tend not to call it a COLA, a cost of living, or uh, or even a, a merit. Uh, we Well, we tend to do more of a merit increase at Amherst, but you know it's based on performance and things of that but it is within the budget guidelines right it's definitely not a cost of i mean again yeah, i got this i got 1.75 percent yeah. i'm very happy with my salary i'm not complaining about my right. salary i think i'm very well compensated um but for what ends up happening is the management fee didn't go up but 1.75 percent yeah yeah so that does impact the amherst housing authority so let's Get a move on with this. Um, am I stating the motion as it should be made? Yes. So I've stated the motion, and do I have a second? A second. Crystal seconds. We've already had discussion, but is there any further discussion? Sue? Um, no further discussion. Crystal? No. I have nothing. nothing. Rich, nothing. nothing. No. Then call for the vote. We have oh, yes. four to zero. Could you sign that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do and... I need to fill in these amounts no. here? Okay. So on your budget, on the very first page, the the account number, all the way down, is um, just under expenses. The forty one ninety administrative other. You'll see what we budgeted is $82,955. And that's because the management fee allows us to bill extra for some of our people that come over. So there's that. And then maintenance goes under the maintenance line item. 
Okay, and then you need to approve the the management fee calculation worksheet. Uh oh, I ended up with somebody else's. Did you know you got yours? Here. Yep. I just handed you the I think. As far as merit raises go, is this a written letter from somebody evaluating you when you say merit raise? That's, um, well, I know what the word means, yeah. but what I'm saying is who who is writing this letter that's saying that a person can go up to a certain amount That's day-to-day -day operations with your staff. Well, so the, the budget guidelines tell us how much we, the, the very most that we can give. And then as the executive director, I do, evaluations and then give folks their raises within the budget guidelines. I have to stick within the budget guidelines. Right, but as far as yourself goes, as an, or not you or, or an executive director. It, it, well, it goes by this. You right. Can't, you can't pay me any more than this. I understand that. Right. Um, but then the, the Amherst board takes care of that. And in the past they have talked to Hadley and then they've talked to Belton Town right. as well. But is it a written performance letter or is it a verbal? Is it verbalized? It's, it's done within a board vote. A board meeting and a board vote. The board meeting board vote. Yeah. Because I have it. Amherst Housing. <laughs> right. Right. I don't know what I did with what you signed. Is this it? Yeah. Okay. What I signed looks like this. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not. Did I hand you? No. I've got my blank copy. I think you just signed another one for the I'll sign Christmas. another one, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I need you. Yeah, your blank. Thank you. This is what I'm trying to keep a, a folder of what's signed so that we can. My chair is. By the way, my chair is missing the one I had in here. That beautiful chair it, it, yeah. you sit on. I don't know if it's in the office I or not, know, but I have an update on furniture, too. Please, mm -hmm. don't let that chair disappear. It was too big for my apartment, a brand new thing. All those chairs I brought in oh, here. And so oh, then you, just, you need the... But there's um, cameras everywhere, so whoever took this... Okay, phone, people, it might be let's, let's keep it down so we can get on with this. Maybe. So we'll go up the management fee calculation worksheet. Yeah. So you're going to approve that, hopefully? Is this okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm, this chair is making noise, too. <laughs> okay. I'm Can I get a motion to uh, approve the management calculation sheet? Can you say the, di the dollar amount? If I could find the management calculation yeah, yeah. sheet. Huh? Yeah, we'll oh, okay. them up. Yeah, and the amount. Good find your page. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. This is it. Uh, the management calculation. Uh, you ready? Okay. So I make a motion that we approve the management fee calculation worksheet in the amount of. Correct? Yes. 49205 Can I get a second? Do a second. Discussion? Sue. So, you can just sign that. Oh, let's say. I didn't look at it enough to come up with anything to discuss. Are you on this one? We just saw it for the first time what a few minutes ago. It's so hard to so that really look at it and discuss. This one. Yeah, it's the numbers that we already discussed and already approved, but this is specific Broken to. down. This is specific to approving the management calculation worksheet. Sure. Um, can I get a second? Yes, I second. Oh, oh, okay. Rich, Rich, already Rich already seconded. And now I will call for the vote. Sue? Yes. yes. Crystal? Yes. yes. Reese is yes, and Rich is yes. So there's that. There you go, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, and then we'll just go back to the budget if you don't mind. 
plates. So there is that, so we understand the administrative other, and then we're um, the legal fees. Look at those there. I think we got cross um, here. There is uh, a schedule of our insurance and employee benefits. We do still pay, uh, or, or we're fully vested, I guess, in our retirement funds. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, which page is one? Now I'm on five of eight. Five of eight. Yeah. Insurance costs continue to go up, both property insurance and workers' comp insurance. Um, we do now have a $9,000 deductible. Um, so I have... Um, put out a question to EOHLC to see if I can put in our capital plan some money for insurance claims. Because mm -hmm. not only to pay the deductible, but also to pay this for the resident to be, to be relocated. Because the only the only way they're relocating a resident is if there's a fire. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of ridiculous mm -hmm. because if you if you have a flood, you need to go somewhere too. So exactly. I'm, I'm hoping to get that into a, a capital plan. Do you have this? So there's I am missing the entire. We did through the budget. Annual budget. So I'm page six of eight. Six of eight. Okay. Okay. So it's a schedule of non routine expenditures. I don't even know. Do you need one? Yeah. Thanks. That's this page here. We put in uh, fifteen thousand dollars for unit rehab, so that's that'll be outside of capital money and outside of an EOHLC or a, a RCAP project. So fifteen thousand dollars, so that we can do projects here. So if you look at um, page seven of eight, the current calculation of the reserve is showing 37%. And that's if we spend all our money at the end of the year, which doesn't look like we're spending it all. Um, so I, I, I hate to say it on camera, but I'm gonna say it on camera. It's, kind, it's almost a good thing that we're below the 50% in this instance. Because if when they do the budget augmentation, when they give out that extra money, we might get a little more. That's great. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's spend it before the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. right. Um, this last page shows you where we have uh, conferences and, tra and travel and things um, budgeted. We do. Our commissioners tend to like to go to conference, so that's a good thing we have those um, budgeted. We also have an additional $7,500 for legal expenses budgeted. Because we tend to use it, right? History yeah. has shown. Yeah. Yeah. So there's those type of things. So that's pretty much the budget in a nutshell. If anybody, so this is has a question. This is a votable item, and uh, it's been presented. Uh, so I'll take a motion to approve the annual operating budget for uh, fiscal year ending 9-30-2025. If you read that, oh, they tell me what to say. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I read this. Okay. Yep. So I move that the proposed operating budget for state aided housing of the Hadley Housing Authority. Do I have to read the parens? Just put uh, only the 400. Uh, chapter 400 dash one for fiscal year end ending 9 30 2025 showing total revenue of 430 or 453,540 and total expenses of $465,511 there 
by requesting a subsidy of $168,840 and further that the executive director's total annual salary of $0 for fiscal year ending 9-30-2025 be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development for its review and approval. And this does have to be roll call. So can I get a second? Second. Crystal Jackson seconds. Um, we've already had quite the discussion, but I'll go around one more time. Sue, do you have any? Yes, why does it say zero amount and not the amount filled in? Because you don't pay, um, it doesn't come out of your budget for the, the ED salary. You, you have no employee, so you have no employee costs. So that's referring to Hadley, that's why it's zero. And, right. This and is our budget, not Amherst budget. Right. So do you have any further questions? Just a comment and the fact that it, this is such an important thing, I really think that we should have had it to look at. Being given it today and voting on this today, to me, doesn't feel right. And I'm just stating that for, I don't feel good about it. I think we need more time to It can't be done until the end of, of <laughs> I mean, September, and our fiscal year starts on October But 1st. still, you don't give somebody a, something like this that you important on the same day as the meeting. If you, if if the majority... you want to table it, uh, I won't vote to table it. I want to get it done. Uh, so, are you finished with your comments? I'm finished with my can comments. I, can I make a comment back mm -hmm. to you? Just to, it, just to reassure you, though, too, it, it is very much, but there's a thick book on uh, the public housing notice page, too. It's the budget guidelines. It all has to follow the budget guidelines. Everything has to add up correctly. You, so our fee accountant prepared it with, I told him what I was looking for as far as you know any of the little extras. Um, but he does this, um, he does them for 26 other housing authorities too. And then it still has to go to EOHLC and IO, I can't say IO's last name, who is in charge of finance. They have to go through it too with a fine tooth comb and approve it. So there's there's a three step process here um, that to make sure that it's it's accurate. Thank you, and, and, and within I'm, guidelines. Right. Thank you, Pamela. Crystal, do you have any? So this amount here, one sixty eight, is the difference between the four fifty three and the four sixty five. The one sixty eight is the subsidy. That's actually, I'm sorry, that was a very good question. I've neglected that. That's the subsidy that DH, EOHLC is going to send us. Oh, good. Right, so we so our budget is the $400,000, but then D, EOHLC is sending us the one, that 168. Which brings it up to the 465. Oh, okay. right, right. Okay. okay, I have no questions, Rich. No, I'm all set. All right, I'll call for the vote. This has to be roll call vote. Sue? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Risa is yes. Rich, yes. Rich is yes. So on the last page, you, you Four all to zero, have to Pam. sign. So we, we, you all have to sign. <laughs> what page would, on this packet, would we write the total amount? What page? The total amount of what? Of what you just, uh, when what she added. <laughs> so if you look the down. When she added the subsidy, where what page would would the total amount be on? It's, on, just, it's on this page, which, is, which you should have in the packet. So the expenses, Sue, is on the very top front page, all the way down to the bottom, after the two bolded lines. Right. It's the total expenses. It's the four thousand. It says total expenses, four sixty five five one one. And then we're adding the subsidy to it, which is what I'm saying. Where and is the there... subsidy is up, and I gave it. So I gave the wrong one. It's at the top. Right. It's under thirty eight oh one. And it's 168840 So what's the difference? So we're adding that amount to the that's four six five five to the 453540. Okay. And it's going to then be the 465511. Okay. So rich. So we just print and then sign and date. Right, so at that top there too, while you're waiting for the signature to come, you'll see that the, the estimated revenues, because we never know, I mean, people's incomes change from our tenants is $275,000. Mm -hmm. right. 
and then the 168. So our, our tenants are still paying a larger Thank percentage you. than the subsidy. That's great. That's great. I don't have any readers or I'd give you. I wish I, I know. I, I keep I, pulling my glasses. I, I can't, can't believe I didn't, don't have them in my pocketbook. I'm hoping I didn't lose it. Check to see if you have those. Um, everybody send? No, I haven't. Oh, yes. Perfect. Okay. Is it stapled at one time? No, and separate. we oh, are yeah. now I don't have uh, okay. to, uh, under the executive director report, letter I, the engagement letter with our fee accountant, Gary DePace. Pamela, would you like to present, please? Yep, so Gary DePace, who has been the uh, fee accountant for the Hadley Housing Authority, I believe he told you folks when he came out for our training, he's been here for 30 years, well before my time. Yeah. So this is just an engagement letter to get us to the end of 26. Um, I do think Gary is, go is nearing more of a retirement phase. Uh, he's gearing towards that. but. Gary DePace, C CPA PC, will still be around, we believe. He's got a new young um, accountant that's working with him. He's got staff in the office. He'll always be overseeing. Um, he is an invaluable help to us, always. Oh, yeah. He's, um, whether it's an accounting question or it's a regulation question. I mean, Gary's been around for so many years. He's just, um, he's just a fixture. Um, so his fee is also in the budget guidelines. What fee accountants can charge is determined by EOHLC and it's based on the number of units. So that's very calculated as well. Um, based on the number of units that we have here in Hadley, his um, fee for the year would be $7,524, which he would spread out monthly. If you go back to your, I hate, I'm sorry, I should have done It's in there. You yeah. go back to your budget, if that is line item under expenses, about just at the top mm -hmm. of the page there, the accounting cost is $41.70, and he has the $75.24 in there. He also has an estimate of $1,500 a year for the modernization. So that's an estimate based on our capital projects that we have in the loop. Um, and that's also, just like the admin fees in a capital project, there's a fee for, because Gary does extra work, making sure the accounting is all done. So he's compensated mm -hmm. for that as well. That's 1500 So um, all I need from the board is a, a vote to go, uh, to go back into contract with Gary for the um, balance. For, uh, the, up until uh, 26. Uh, I move that we uh, uh, contract with Gary DePace as our fee accountant in this uh, engagement letter uh, through fiscal year 2025. 26. 26. 20, 20, 20, 20, till fiscal year 2026. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do I have a second? Yes. Crystal seconds. Discussion. Sue. Well, you're not, you don't offer us another option. In other words, there's never any discussion about it. So myself as being new to a board, mm -hmm. I would automatically want to vote for somebody who's been doing it for that many years. Right. But we're not being presented other options. Yeah. And there's I not, think there's not many options. If you go on to the AUP website, um, which is uh, where we get our auditors for the AUP, most of those auditors are also fee accountants. 
with the, ex the I'm sure there's more than the, the exception of Lisa Fallon, who does our audits too, but she doesn't do the day-to-day -day fee accounting. So it's, it is, it's a niche mm -hmm. um, specialty that we're in. So it's, Massachusetts is different than other states, so we don't have people coming from other states. I mean, he was, Mike, uh, he was pretty lucky to get Michael to come here from mm -hmm. Boston to move back home right. to Eastern Mass to take it over, so. I, I would also, as a new member, being on the board, for someone who has 30 years in doing this with us and in in life, uh, I wouldn't even want someone new to to mm -hmm. reply because yeah. then you have to develop the rapport. You have to trust this person, and from what we've seen with his performance, I believe that he's someone that we can trust and we should keep. Right, yeah. and remember, he's audited too, because like Lisa see. Fallon comes along and she audits his work. That every few years there's an audit, so. Uh, he is very consistent. He uh, has an extremely good reputation. Mm -hmm. He has caught fraud in housing authorities before, and he reports it. Directly so. to the board, not to the executive right. director. He, he doesn't work the for the executive director. He works for the board. Mm -hmm. Right. And so and if we, there we was... We barely, barely see him if he works for the board. Right. Well, I don't know where he is, but... Well, well it's just it's, a report. <laughs> I always think of Ebenezer Scrooge, sorry Gary if you're watching, um, just kind of hiding behind a closed door with the, the things the on the The numbers, sleeves. yeah. Counting numbers. Counting numbers, That's like I mean, the Wizard of Oz, I must. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. It's, the, it's a back office. The Wizard of Oz show. was a fraud. Gary yeah. DePace is not. Yeah. He is audited consistently. All of the housing, how many? 26 that he has. 26 housing authorities. He's he's one of very few fee accounts available in the state, and he has done a great job for Hadley so, all these years. So I will say, he so he does 26 housing authorities as the fee account, and, and then I don't even know how many housing authorities that he's a state, he's an auditor, an AUP auditor for them. Yeah. You're not allowed to audit the housing authorities that obviously right. that you are a fee account. Right, right. So he's in a lot of... That's why he knows so much. He knows auditing and fee accounting. Well, um, EOHLC also has um, c uh, groups of folks like they'll the, they have a, a working ED group that will, mm -hmm. go, I, which I would love to be on, that go up and talk to EOHLC on a monthly basis mm -hmm. and say, here's what's going on um, when they're devising um, the budget guidelines and coming up with new things. They'll meet with a group of fee accountants, and Gary was always on that mm -hmm. too. So he's. He's in the know. Is he the person that also decides who your auditors are going to be when you, when a housing authority is audited? No, no. That's so. It's so we've had um, in Amherst we've had Markham and Associates, and then here in Belchertown we've had um, I'm sorry Hadley in Belchertown we've had Lisa Fallon. Lisa doesn't do the federal audits. It's a different caliber of, of audit. <clears throat> <coughs> D, D, uh, I'm sorry, EOHLC requires that you change every five years. So this past year, which we should have the guideline uh, or the audit um, next month for you, Markham and Associates actually audited um, Hadley because Lisa had to bow out for this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this year you have Markham audit. and Associates out of where? Out of where Boston? Um, I think it's like it's Needham or it's at the eastern part of the state. Mm. Yeah. They were at the conference. Oh. Do you remember yeah. seeing Mark? Yeah. Yeah. So they're so a big they group. they did 2024. Uh, 2023. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about, I thought you meant for now. So Lisa well, was out 2023. For the 23 audit, which ended... In uh, 2024. Right. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. no. Yeah. Okay, where are we? Approve or not approve? Okay. So can I call for the vote now, please? Yes. Yes. Uh, so Sue is yes. Crystal's yes. I'm yes. yes. Rich is yes. Motion carries four to zero. And I'm going to have you sign this. I'm going to have you sign it. You're going to yeah. have me sign it. Do we have to sign or no? No. Okay. No. Um, so next next month or, or in the beginning of November, Gary will be out with the year end, mm -hmm. and he'll go over all of. There's a lot of things at that point um, that he'll be pointing out. And he always uses it as a as a way to get a tutorial right, for understand. everybody. Right. Um, and and um, 
there'll be a lot of other forms for and everybody. Is and how is either the October at the end of the October uh, meeting or November at the latest? He'll be here. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! Great. Yeah, you get to meet him. Yay. Did you I, meet him at conference? I. Did I meet him? I, I don't think, think I met, met him. You so saw him. Yeah, you I saw him. Him. Yeah. Oh, she didn't get to meet him. Gray hair. He hair. ate lunch with us that one day, or the last day I ate lunch with him. Um, mm. But I, I don't think, think you were there. Or, no, I didn't eat lunch the last day. Okay, okay. Okay, so, or not the, it was breakfast. It was breakfast. Mm. Okay. The last day. Okay, because I didn't eat lunch the last yeah. day either. Yeah, we didn't, we left. Yeah. Okay, so now we're done with the engagement letter. We're to board correspondence. I have no board correspondence to bring up. Does anyone else have any correspondence, discussions, conversations with people? For Sue? instance, give us an example of what you're... Anything related to the board. Were you in conversation with anyone that you need to tell the board about? In relation to the board, no. In relation to the no. Hadley Housing Authority, for right. which you have fiduciary responsibility. I guess uh, if, because of the fact that there's no longer a director, will, if they you do hire another director, will the monies go to another line, a, a person that's doing another position? Because you said one time at our la one of our last meetings that you were going to reorganize your employees. Mm -hmm. If you decide down the road not to hire another director, you being the executive director, person left being the director, will that monies go to hire other employees with different titles? I'm going to interject here, Pamela. This is a day-to-day -day operation thing that this board has no input in. Has I don't no look questions at it as day -day, about. Though, because it, it is day-to-day -day. by management, and that's management. You're managed by a management agreement. I, I think we need to scoot back from allowing this kind of line because. It's day-to-day -day operations, who you hire, I don't in what position. Day -day. I'm sorry. It is. By regulation, it is. And we have nothing to do with who you hire or move around or whatever. We well, should I'm not asking who names. she's hiring. I'm just asking, we should will, even if know that, will their that position names. disappear, then monies will be left over. The, there's no money left over. I, if I may, Please. are you asking if the, is there money left over from the management agreement? No. In other words, to me, it's how salary, I, look, I think, to, with a, without her interrupting, to, to me, when we have a manager agreement, mm -hmm. you're the executive director. Then there's a director. You, of course, the executive director is over the director, but that position is no longer being filled by somebody. How, if you decide not to hire a director because you're hiring now support service coordinators and other people that we never had before, the monies that come in from the state that would have covered the director's position, how will that be dissipated? So distributed. Yeah, I think, I think what yeah she's I think what she's saying is, if that position is no longer available, we get sixty five thousand dollars for that position. What happens with that money? Right. So it stays in the line item of, of the without a budget revision on the Amherst I can't move it within the line, within yeah, the budget. Nothing can be done with that. Well, that's what I was wondering. So yeah. I don't look at that as day to day operation. I look at that as management. Right, but it's Amherst management because it's right. Amherst. But Amherst budget. is managing us, so basically it's all. Right, management. but your services aren't going to be affected by. No, not affected, but, but we're still part and party of the whole. But not you're not part of our budget, other than than the the fees that you pay us. But no, it, but as a general question, a line item has to, you have to spend the money within your line item. If there's a change plus or minus 10%, you have to do a budget revision. So at this point, it's, we're still, it's, it's only been two weeks, <laughs> so. But it doesn't affect Hadley's budget at all. No. It's not even up for our consideration. Yeah. Um, did you have anything else, Sue? Nothing else. Okay. Crystal? No. I have nothing? Nothing. All right. Then we're down to future meetings. Um, we're already scheduled for October 29th at 11 a.m. And the one after that is November 26th. That's, I believe, two days before Thanksgiving. And then we can maybe, I don't know, we'll... Maybe move it up we'll, a week? No. 
Uh, we'll Which check so with, uh, excuse me, we'll check with um, um, Gary DePace and see if he can come then or whatever works for him. Is that, is that Thanksgiving week? It is. Oh, I'm off. Yeah. Oh, you're off, so that yeah. won't work. So uh, do you want to do it the Tuesday Thanksgiving. before? Thanksgiving is the 28th, or is it? Wait. Well, yeah, let's double check. I don't know. Because it's two days before Thanksgiving, I just said maybe we could reschedule yeah. the meeting for two, the week before. Yeah. Because a lot of us go away for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So Thanksgiving is on the 28th, um, and you're going to be gone that whole week? Yes, I'm, okay. I'm going to be chained to a stove. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so how about how about Tuesday the nineteenth, November nineteenth? Sure. Okay. How's it? Let's ha let's find out if Pamela can do that because she has lots of meetings. I think we have the nineteenth open. Rich, how are you on the nineteenth? Fine by me. Yeah. I have a question. Alex, are we going to have any meetings? Um, we didn't have a date yet for the digital. Not, not for November, no, but October, yeah. Okay, so I can put down yes. Um, yeah, because we'll probably have our meeting in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sue, is Tuesday, November 19th, does that work for you? Yes, better than. Okay, so yeah. it looks like we're in agreement. Uh, Tuesday, November 19th, Pam. 11 a.m. And sometimes that happens. We have to get off schedule for various, usually <coughs> Thanksgiving and Christmas that does that. But. Okay, does um, uh, Pamela and uh, Crystal and I went to the Mass Naro conference, and so I put this under commissioner's discussion in case you anybody wanted to give reflections or said something about what they learned, et cetera. Crystal, do you have anything? Yes, I learned an extreme amount of ex information, um, not just pertaining to the housing authority, but to benefit the town of Hadley as well. Um, the information I did learn uh, regarding the housing authority, speaking with HUD and all of the different Section 8 ha um, availability and the different housing authorities it was amazing that information that was provided is definitely educational it it really was something needed and efficient i, I really enjoyed myself and meeting the people and everyone affiliated and also to see what the housing authority what hud is doing behind the scenes to increase um, more housing for low income, for disabled, for elderly, and how the housing authorities in the eastern part of Massachusetts and what they're going through as far as the funding and trying to um, provide and develop on new land. Um, also with the guidelines and policies and procedures with HUD, it was a lot of information and, and I definitely will go again. I will go again. I too. I could just second everything you said. <laughs> it's the all food was good. And the food was good. And the beach was wonderful. The beach was wonderful. <laughs> the um, the uh, that's what I've experienced. This was my fifth time going, and every time I go, I'm able to build on what I learned before, which makes it easier to be a board member because exactly. you just know so more much more. Yes. There were many, many offerings for uh, Board of Commissioner folks who have taken on that role uh, to help us be more effective, do our job, know what the rules, laws, and regs are, and I am ever so grateful to all the presenters uh, because uh, they, they teach you how to run a meeting, they teach you how to deal with other board members, and um, uh, you know situations Robert's rules of order everything so I'm very grateful for the opportunity to go yes. because I think it it really does help us be more efficient in our position more definitely more effective yeah. more knowledgeable um, so I have to say thank you Pamela for putting that down as a line item because it really does help makes your life easier too I think it does <laughs> and I also want to say I did get to meet Belchertown 
South Hadley, so many different uh, workers and EDs for those housing authorities, and they're, they're such nice people. They are. They're really, really wonderful, you know, and you wouldn't expect that because it's such a serious position. Yeah. You know, but they all had great composure and characters. Mm -hmm. And again, as Reese said, I want to thank you, Pamela, for doing that because yeah. it's definitely needed. And next year will definitely build on what I know today. Good. And I'll just add the the one thing that I I learned after the first time I went was all the executive directors and staff and EOHLC and everybody involved in housing their number one goal in life is to preserve the housing we have yes and to make more <laughs> yeah 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 so. that's why i say with your job going to the conference i see now everything <coughs> you do behind closed doors yeah. it's a lot it it's really a lot it's a lot there is a lot thank a lot. you yeah um, there was um, there was a lot again this this time about um, the mental health crisis that we're all going um, through and enduring in both the staff is having issues our tenants are having issues the community in the whole is having issue so, so there's a there was a lot of um, good information about how to deal with that um, this time we had well over 35 vendors which was amazing yes. Reese has the pen mm -hmm. I'm really thrilled about this woman um, <laughs> interior resources she's coming out at the end of the month and she's going to be looking at our community room and they do really nice commercial furniture that is um good looking and um durable and bariatric chairs for maybe some of our larger folks wow um so she's going to come out and do a design and then we'll have a tenants meeting too to say you know here's here's what it is what do you think so that we can update our um it's been sons. a long time, hasn't it? Oh, this is, I mean, this, I would imagine this has been here since day one. But, 62, uh, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But our laundry, our, our laundry vendor was there. Um, I took a refresher class on uh, procurement, which is always changing and always, there's so many nuances to that. Always something to learn there. Um, but yeah, it was overall very, very good. I have lots of information. We. We missed you too. Hopefully next time. Yeah, next I'll time we're able Rich to, no, no, never to come. Over the <laughs> Rich is like, just let me know how it went. <laughs> but, but yeah, that was uh -huh. really good. Okay, so the next are items for future agenda. Sue, do you have anything? I have to think about it. I'll get to you if I think of something. Okay, no. Crystal, I have nothing. Nothing, Rich. Nothing. Um. Oh, Maggie left, so yeah, she was she our... Yeah, she Meals on Wheels. Yeah, she had, to, she, had to she had to go. So, um, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Yes. A second? Second. <coughs> then we are adjourned.